a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me Surround. 
lifted high oh god the battle belongs to you and every fear i lay at your feet i'll sing i'll sing through the night oh god the battle belongs to you God, do I take that job? Do I not take that job? Should I do this? Should I do that? What am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to do there? If you read after that, those verses, it begins to say that we're supposed to sing. We're supposed to praise Him. We're supposed to praise with melodies and songs in our heart unto God. The reason for that is not because God needs an ego boost. He's God. But the reason for that is for you and I. When we begin to try to quit when we begin to try to figure out what we're supposed to do we put our hands on it we get our thoughts into it and we end up not actually listening to God and doing what God wants us to do sometimes we take the the road that looks perfect and that's not the road God wanted you to take so when we begin to praise him and we begin to worship him and we begin to just listen and concentrate on him God I'm in the middle of this but I'm just gonna praise you anyway I'm in the middle of this. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn right now. I, I don't know. I just don't know. Then in the middle of it, when we begin to praise Him and we begin to worship Him and we begin to get our eyes upon Him and we sing songs and melodies to Him, 
then what happens is, is he begins to move and shows us the way that we are to go. He will either open a door that was already closed or close a door that should be open or shouldn't be open. But whatever the case may be, he will tell you what you need to do. God, I, I, I don't know what to do. Then in the middle of it, I'm going to let everything that I have concentrate on who he is. And that's when we become sensitive to the spirit. And that's when we begin to hear him tell us what we need to do or where we're supposed to go. But he'll either show you where to go or he's going to walk through the middle of it with you. No matter what the case is, as long as our focus is on him and who he is and not trying to fight and work to work everything out, just praise him, lift him up no matter what. And that's when we become sensitive to who he is. That's when we will get the, the, the guidance that we need that is from him. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you have a situation in your life, I just encourage you to begin to worship him. Begin to praise him. Get everything that's about you concentrating on who he is and watch and see if he doesn't move in your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name and we thank you, Lord, for who you are. You're a big God. And Lord, you are so wise. And Lord, your word says in James that if, if I'm lacking wisdom just to ask you, so my, my thought is upon you, my words are upon you, my praise is upon you. And when I do that, Lord, I just thank you that each and every situation in our life, Lord, you will make it plain, you will make it clear, and we will know exactly what your will is. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Amen? Amen. If you would, just kind of uh, say hi to two or three people that are around you, and let's get ready for God to just move in this service even more. Quickly, if you would, just for a moment, sing that little bridge with me. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing, nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Sing that out. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing, nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Come on, sing that chorus with me. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Just for a second here, I just feel in my heart right now for every single person in this place. Just to pray right now specifically and, and focus our minds in the next few moments. Because I feel like tonight is a critical moment, not just for Expression Church, but for our world and for our nation. And I just want to say and declare as... Um, Pastor Kevin is going to be bringing the word tonight. I just want to pray specifically tonight that every ear be opened, every heart be open and turned to the truth and the, just the manifest presence of God in this room tonight. I'm going to tell you about some logistical things, but if we come together and we don't hear the voice of God, then it's all in vain. Amen. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to tell you about a couple things, and then Pastor Kevin's going to come up here, because I really feel specifically tonight is a very important moment for us as a church and as a nation together. So Father, as we pray right now, God, I just ask, Lord, that every heart, every mind, every single motive just begin to align with you and your presence, Father. 
So tonight, every single man and woman that is in this room, God, that you would just open their heart right now, God, and massage their heart and incline their ear even more to the heavenlies tonight. God, I pray for our pastor as he is going to come and bring the word. God, I just pray, Lord, that you bring wisdom directly from heaven that goes beyond just this room, that it goes and penetrates the atmosphere and what you are doing among us, Father. So, God, we bless you tonight and say the battle belongs to you, that you are good in every circumstance, and you are amazing, Father, in Jesus' name. And every single person agrees with me tonight to say amen and amen. Tonight, very quickly... I want to tell you about a couple things. We do want to receive our tithe and offering. So if you've come prepared tonight to give, I want to tell you about how to do that very quickly as our stewardship team comes. There are a couple ways that you can give underneath of every chair. The offering envelopes are there. You can give via check or cash. Make those checks payable to ECH. And then also we have text giving, and that number is 84321. All you have to do is dial that number, like you're sending a text message to it, and then you hit send, and then it'll automatically walk you through those steps. It's an imperative time that we all be engaged in every single facet. Every single piece of us just begins to lock into what the kingdom of God's doing. That means our minds, our hearts, and what Pastor Kevin's been preaching on as far as our health, and our families, our relationship, and our finances, and our economics, yielding them to God to see great things happen. So tonight, as we, as Pastor Kevin is getting ready to come, I just want to encourage you, if you have your offering ready to give, you're more than welcome to step out of your seat and bring it to the front here as these gentlemen are going to walk and meet you up the aisle. So we bless our offering tonight in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen and amen. So be blessed tonight as you give. How about now? Yeah. No, I'm good. Let's get into the word. How about that? Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get an, a woman? Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you even. I'll ask you to leave right now. It ain't happening here. Ain't playing that game. Are you ready? Let's get into some stuff that you probably won't find in the Bible bookstore. What do you think? When they, it's going to be a good year. When, they, when, the, when the Sabbath day, or when Jubilee would hit in the days of old, they would blow a trumpet in Zion, or a shofar, they would call it. We're not going to blow a shofar here, but we're going to be a trumpet in our own mouth. And I'm going to tell you, you may not know this yet, and watch for your, watch your you know, just like you're watching for that stimulus check to hit your bank account, you know it's coming, <laughs> Right? I'm telling you right now, by the Spirit of the Lord, revival is here. Amen. It's already been sent. Yes. It hadn't maybe not delivered yet, but you keep watching your account. You keep checking your mailbox, your home, because revival is here. Yes. You watch. We have to expand, not because we want a bigger church. We've got to make room for people. Because we're going to make disciples on people that are converted and people that are pressing into the kingdom. Yeah. Are you guys ready? It's, it's like you've never seen before. You're going to see unprecedented things this year. You're going to see people healed, set free, transformed, delivered, and you're going to be the one doing it. It's not going to go outside of you. It's going to include you. Right. If you didn't get a stimulus check and your next next your neighbor did, I promise you're going to be mad. Right? Because you ah, better believe it's coming because I'm entitled to it. It's what you believe. Well, you're entitled to heal too. Amen. Not only are you entitled to receive the blessing, you're entitled to give the blessing. Yes. 
So this thing's like a current in electricity. It's just going to continue to flow. It's, it's, it is, it's here. And what you're feeling and sensing throughout the, the news and all the wild stuff that's happening in Washington and all over the country, whether it's a Democrat, Republican, independent, I'm not even into the politics. I'm just telling you there is a rumbling breaking forth out of the ground. And it's the manifestation, it's the travailing and the manifestation of the spirit of the sons of God. Yes. Growing up, making themselves known, and that's not, that's not talking about somebody else. I'm talking to you. You're the sons of God. You are the genuine sons of God that have been born of the spirit. Ooh, it's going to get good tonight. I can feel it. And they don't have the, the clock. They're installing things around here now, new equipment and things. So they took the screen off the back. So I don't have a clock on that back wall. You, you, might, get in, you might get the end of your news network if we get home on time. But she stepped the clock right there so I don't forget it. So we're safe. <laughs> and it's blinking. It blinks every five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Let's do this. I want, I want you to get into some, some things. Um, Let's just go there. You ready? Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Going out of the King James. And while they're pulling that up, I just gave it to them just a moment ago. So I'll have to give them grace because, and they're fast. God in Genesis chapter 3 and you guys hear me say this a lot. I preach a lot in Genesis because in Genesis is, is the beginning and it's the order. And through Genesis, I learned as an early Christian, I found Christ in Genesis chapter 1. And when I found Jesus through Genesis chapter 1, I was able to see Gen Jesus in Genesis chapter 2. And then I saw him through Exodus. I threw him through the whole Bible. And when you begin to see that you can understand that God knows the end from the beginning. So if I read the end of the book in Revelation, I can see the beginning of the book. If I read the beginning of the book, I can see how it's going to end. Okay? Just kind of how it works. But when Adam had sinned and transgressed, the Bible says that when God came and found him, he gave him um, instruction, and he, he told him, he said, by the sweat of your brow... You're going to, the ground is cursed. Out of the ground, thorns and thistles are going to grow. But he said this to the woman. He said to Eve, he said, there's going to be enemy, enmity between your seed and the serpent's seed, the devil's seed, Satan's seed. And they're going to have enmity. They're never going to get along. That means the enemy's going to have seed. And that means you're going to have seed. We, of course, we know the seed of the woman it was Jesus 2,000 years ago. The, in, the enemy is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He only knows what's current. He anticipates because he can't create. All he can do is imitate and, 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 and counterfeit. But he uses us as the creator because God gave that Billy Dust to create. So when he gave the mandate and the curse, if you will, God did, and said the enemy to the woman, there's going to be enemy between you and your seed, and told the serpent there's going to be enemy between her seed and your seed. Then on her, your, your, her, he's going to bru bruise your head, you're going to bruise his heel, which happened on the cross. The enemy knew, okay, I'm going to have seed. I'm going to have offspring. And I know that through that enemy, through that seed, I've got to bring a seed in because he's got a, she's got a seed. So I'm going to go on a quest to bring in a seed that's going to be a counterfeit that she'll think it's her seed. That's why when Moses was just a baby, Pharaoh made a decree to kill all the boys. Because he didn't want that seed, the boy, to grow up because it could be somebody that's going to make it be a deliverer. When Jesus was born as an infant, you know what happened? Herod put out a decree, bring him here because he wanted to kill him. That, that was coming and instrumented, instrumental from and originated from the devil to bring a seed. The Bible says that because the enemy between the two, 
Over the course of time, Adam and Eve began to replenish the earth, started having children. Cain and Abel came along, and even to the point where Abel's sacrifice was off, offered to God and God received it. Cain's was not. The jealous spirit rose up in Cain. A murderous spirit rose up in him. You're seeing that here today across the country. A jealous, murderous spirit rose up. And when it does, it has to lash out. And it's the spirit of murder. And it, it causes us to... It's ran through our country because of many, many years of decades ago where abortion became rampant, but also not only on infants, but also end of life. It's, if you're going to protect life, you've got to protect life. Okay? So, so it's not just the Christian point of view. It's the biblical point of view. So because that murderous spirit and attitude entered many decades ago, it's all over our, our culture today. And we see the pressures that it puts on us, okay, because it manifests and it shows up and the, the signs of it, the output of it comes up in so many ways. It comes up in hatred and bitterness, unforgiveness. Um, we act out things that we shouldn't be acting out of because we're, 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 that, that spirit is here. It's the spirit of Cain. And Cain was jealous because Abel's offering was accepted to God. Abel's offering was the best the, the, of his firstlings, which was his, his, his uh, animals. He brought an animal that he couldn't create, that, that life came from God. So he killed the animal and brought that as a sacrifice. Cain took the best of the ground. He planted stuff, and it was, his hands was all over it. And it came from the ground, and, but the, Cain knew that the, the curse came on Adam that said, out of the ground will grow thorns and thistles. So Cain brought a, brought a seed that was from a contaminated ground. Abel brought an offering to God that was made from life that Abel couldn't possibly create. So God accepted his offering. From that point, you should see a picture that your best sacrifice that you give to God is never going to be good enough. Never. It will never be good enough. I don't care how good you are, how smart you are, how pretty you are, how pretty you think you are. It doesn't matter. It's never going to be good enough. I don't care how much you can quote every scripture in the Bible. I don't care how much money you give. It'll never be good enough because there's only one sacrifice that's good enough. Abel knew what sacrifice that was. It was something that he could not create and it, was, it created the shedding of blood which without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. That same thing happened with, with God, with Jesus. So through Cain and that murderous spirit that he killed his brother and the ground the blood out of Abel was crying out from the ground and screaming out from the ground. The blood of humankind and humanity was screaming from the ground because of the shedding of innocent blood. And through that contamination came a series of generations that produced the, the workings of flesh. And it, came, it became so fleshly that it caused havoc and wreaked havoc in society and culture in those days. So it, the output was sin. So the wickedness of flesh and sin was running rampant. To make matters worse, over the next several chapters of Genesis, Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the landscape of the earth was so wicked and so vile that there had to be something happening. And you're going to see what I'm talking about because you're going to see, the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the, with the Son of Man. Yeah. Right? So everybody's looking for Jesus to come back. And he gave us some signs, as it was in that day. What day? Noah's day. Going into chapter 6, the landscape of the earth is wicked. Flesh 
mankind had made a mess of everything. The ground's contaminated. Man is contaminated. And something had happened where God evaluates the landscape of life, of human life, and he says this in chapter one. And God saw the wickedness, let's go back. And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, now look at this, it didn't say the son of men, it says the, the sons of God saw the daughters of men. That they were fair, pretty, and they, they took them as wives under the cell. Here's what happens. The earth is wicked. It's, 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 it's humanity has fallen to the pit. It, anything vile was there. It was a stench in the nostrils of God. It became such a pit, and why it, why it became a pit, that the Bible says that when Lucifer, which was one of the three archangels, tried to overthrow God and rise, raise above God, God cast him to the ground. The Bible says that a third of the stars fell with him by his tail. The tail brought him with him, which means the end of the story. Satan told them how, what a good ending it might be if they followed him. So a third of those angels fell to the ground, to the earth. Those, a third of those angels were on the earth during this time. In Job, the Bible says, before there was anything, Job was the first book written in the Bible. The Bible says before time, the sons of God came and presented themselves to God one day. And Satan came with them to present himself. And he says, what are you doing? How'd you get here? What are you here? Because Satan was a son of God. Those angels that he created were sons of God. They fell to the ground. I'm talking about fallen angels, fallen demonic spirits taking on human bodies. You're not going to get this in the Bible bookstore, right? This isn't going to be a John 3.16 message tonight, but I'm going somewhere. If you'll go with me, you'll get there. They fell to the ground, and they were attracted to the stench and the vile and the sickness of humanity. Took on a body. The sons of God, didn't say sons of men, sons of God. The women were of men. So the sons of God brought their seed into the sons of men. So demonic forces begin to impregnate beautiful women on the earth. Why? Because it was a battle for the seed. It was a battle for the seed, the offspring. Why? Because it was a, 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 a curse on Genesis chapter three. That God told the woman, your seed and her seed, his seed is going to be enemies. So here they go. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, pretty, and they took wives of all which they, did, they, they, they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be, here we go, it's the first time you see a timeline put on man. His days shall be 120 years old. If you live less than 120 years old, you're living less than this promise that he gave him here. You know, none of us live in 120, right? He put a time limit on it and a term limit on it and a date on it because he saw flesh so vile and wicked. We start living in the spirit, you're going to increase the age, age span of life, lifespan of people. Yes. We start becoming spiritual people, we'll expand the lifespan. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with them for their, their flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now watch this. I'm going somewhere tonight. This is going to be good. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, seed, into the woman, 
to produce offspring, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Now, here's what happened. You had a contaminated, fallen, demonic, lying, manipulative spirit released from the enemy, finding place of pregnancy in women, in mankind, producing offspring that were growing up that had wickedness in their mind. Even though they might have had good intentions, they still were deceived. Are you following me? And he repented the Lord had made man on the earth. He, didn't repent man, he did not repent that he made man. He repented he made him on the earth. Because the earth was contaminated now because of the fall. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. You remember? <laughs> Fell to the ground. Moses, what do you have in your hand? I have a rod. Moses, take the rod, throw it to the ground. He throws it to the ground. The rod becomes a serpent. That's a picture. It was a rod in his hand, right? Lucifer was a cherub in heaven, anointed. The rod was anointed. When he cast it to the ground, it became a serpent. When Lucifer fell from heaven, it hit the ground, he became a serpent. God said, Moses, grab the serpent by the tail. He picked it up by the tail, and guess what it became again? Anointing. When God took, cast Satan from, the earth, or from heaven to the ground, he became a ser serpent. God grabs him by the tail on the cross, yeah. and it became the anointing again. Yes. Let me say that again. Are you following me? That's why the end of a thing is better than the beginning. That's why I was talking about the very beginning. I can read Revelation and find the end of the story because it's also at the beginning of the story. Your seed will be enmity between each other, and he will bruise your heel, and you will bruise his head. It tells me right there that's the end of the story. It'll be painful, but you're going to win. Genesis chapter 3 tells us it's going to be painful, but you're going to win. So the battle from that point on is of the seed. And it's of the sacrifice. Oh, this is so good. And the Lord said, I will destroy man, who? Whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, here we go, a perfect man in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Listen, that word perfect does not mean his character was perfect. You know what that means, what, what that means? Noah was not born of the Nephilim. He was not born of the sons of God coming from the fallen race. Noah was born outside of that. Noah found grace in God's eyes because God, Noah was not, not because he was a good man, perfect man and he was just all, made all good decisions. You'll see that he didn't later. But Noah was a man that was not born under that he was born out of a perfect lineage from Adam and Eve, not sons of God to the sons of the, 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 the uh, daughters of men. He wasn't contaminated. I've studied it. I went back and looked. Noah's ancestors were not from that fallen giant group. So God found a man that was born not of that and he had to save mankind. Now watch what he does. So Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Listen, this is a picture of where we are today. I'm going to show you this in just a minute. It's right where we're living. And he's already said to us, as it is the days of Noah will be the days you see the Son of Man. 
Everybody is looking for that to happen, and the setting is here. But where do we play a role in this? You're Noah. The earth was so corrupt before God, and the earth was filled. Would you all agree with me? Can we say that tonight? Would you all agree it's pretty corrupt out there? It's pretty corrupt. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you try to walk on. It doesn't matter who you casted your vote for. The bottom line is self is self-motivated. And everybody looking for jockeying for position and power somehow is looking for something to help self-benefit. So you have self is what we're dealing with. And because we have self and because we're in a nation that's free, corruption happens in every area. It just does, right? Unless we're subjected to the power of the Holy Spirit. The earth was corrupt before God and earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all the flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence I can't let it go on any longer, Noah. I can't. I can't. Noah, you can't fix it. So I've got to do something. The end of the flesh has come up before me, and the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Wait a minute. He wasn't destroying the people, he was destroying the earth. People just have to be in the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of the 50 cubits, and the height of 30 cubits. I'm going to stop right there for just a moment. Now turn over with me, if you don't mind, to Second Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read two scriptures for you here. And then I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 11. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Then I'm going to tie all this. Then read one more scripture and I'm going to tie it all together for you. Just chapter 1 tonight. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Let me just go with it. I've got it pulled up. This is Peter talking. Here it is. Watch this. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, that's how I know those sons of God that had fallen to the ground, had taken on bodies, and got with women that were fair and pretty, got them pregnant and had seed in the, into them, had offspring that produced giants in the land. In the days of Philistine, they were still there. Goliath was one of them. They were still on the earth. Are you following me so far? And you're going, what does this have to do with everything? I'll tell you. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered, delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Let's go to verse six and see what it says. I hadn't planned on going to six, but let's just see what it says. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overflow, making an, exa an example of those that should, should, live un should not live ungodly, or should live ungodly, should they live ungodly. What am I, what am I saying here? I'm saying that God prepared hell for those angels. He spared them not. He cast them to the ground, and when the earth was being destroyed, God was destroying all of that wickedness in the head, in the mind of people. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Why did Noah find grace in the eyes of God? Because he was a good man? No. He had a different seed in him. Are you following me? He had a different seed in him. 
if you have Christ in you, you have a different seed in you. Noah was called to save his whole family. Noah was spared the judgment that was for those angels that had fallen and the wickedness of the people and the offspring of the people of those seed that was wicked. But God saved Noah and his family because he found grace in the eyes of God. He was from a different seed. The picture on that today for us is the judgment of God is not gonna fall on you because you're of a different seed. Are you hearing me? So he tells Noah, you, me, in today, 2021, and he says to us, I need you to build an ark. Not a building out of acacia wood, an ark. The ark is Christ. I need you to build it. It's three stories high, it has a window. It's body, soul, and spirit. That's the ark. And you can have an outer court and an inner court and a holy of holies, that's the ark. And I need you to go tell your family. I need you to go tell the people to come and get in the ark. Not because I'm gonna destroy them, I've gotta destroy the wickedness. I spared judgment from them because the world is judged already, the Bible says. I don't condemn them. The world is judged, I don't have to judge you because the world's already judged. I need you to come out from underneath the judgment. And how do you do that is get in the ark. How do you get in the ark? You become like Noah. How do you become like Noah? You have a different seed. And then when you have a different seed, you can bring everybody from your offspring inside of there. My kids? Yeah. My uncle? Yeah. What if they don't believe? Get them in the ark. That's right. That's right. What if they don't live right? Get them in the ark. How do I get them in the ark? First of all, you got to know that you're the one preparing the ark for them. What if they only go to the outer court of the first story? They'll be on the ark. What if they only understand the sacrifice of Jesus on the outer court? They're on the ark. What if they progress into here and they little bit learn how to understand a little bit about the Bible and they're progressing, but they're really not fully in the spirit. They're still in the ark. In here, they begin to heal people and set people free and pray for people and they got boldness and the kingdom is really coming a reality to them. They're in the ark. They're no different than the people out here in the third story. They're still in the ark. The whole foundations of the world right now are out of joint. And we're watching it happen on television. And we're putting our faith in one party or two parties or a split party and to balance the power. And I understand the whole democracy and the republic. But listen, this is the kingdom that we're part of. We're in revival, we're in revolution, and you're a part of it. Are are you in the ark? Are you saved? The Bible says, it goes on to say that Noah in the, the ark was saved because of the water. Do you know that was water baptism? The ark was in the water and they were saved by the ark. The flood saved them. And right now the country's going, is it, is it, is it Biden? Looks like Biden. Georgia didn't go the way some people thought it was going to go. 
And hundreds of thousands of people across the country are praying and praying and praying and praying. And they're going, and they're decreeing, and they're decreeing, and they're decreeing. And, and I get all of that. And we should, if that's a, that's a call you have, that's a compassion or a, a passion that you have and a, and a fervency and a zeal that you have, you keep decreeing and you keep declaring. But I got news for you. While you're declaring that, you better get some people on the ark. Because we're getting mesmerized by the prophetic word. But ain't nobody doing the word. I'm telling you to heal the sick. That's the proof in the pudding. I'm telling you to cast out devils. And you're going, I, I'm not talking about an open show and a demonstration and a movie theater. I'm, not, I'm talking about a, a devil is when somebody believes a lie and you tell them the truth and you displace the lie and they live the truth. I'll give you one. How many of you over here on this side, how many of you are not saved? Raise your hand. You're not saved. I need you to get saved tonight. I need you to get on the ark. Can you do that? Anybody want on the ark? I need you saved. What am I mean by saved? I need you to believe that Jesus died for you and there ain't a thing you can do about it. I need, you to, I need you to believe that and there's not a thing you can do about it. Right? And then I need you to come follow us so we can make you fishers of men. So you'll go from change. You'll go from one place to another in your progression, but you, you can't do that unless you follow me on the ark. You can stop at the outer court. I'm okay with that. It's your journey. You can progress to the second place. It's okay. It's your journey. You can move all the way into the spirit of the thing, into the kingdom. That would be a wonderful place to stay. It's your journey. But you don't have the luxury of not getting on the ark. Because if you don't get on the ark, the world is judged already and you're subject to that. And all I can tell you is to fend for yourself because you're going to do the best you can to run from the very thing that's chasing you. Yeah. This is a good thing. We are right now. I'll tell you where we are. Jesus died on the cross and thousands of people put their faith in this man. They put their faith in this guy. For three and a half years, they followed him everywhere he went. Some followed him because he gave them food. Some followed him because they, he read their mail. Some followed him because he did miracles in their sight. He did the works of God. Some were curious. Some knew him for who he was. But on the day of Passover, and he got crucified, they gave up all hope. Because the one they fought was there to save them, was gone. And he looks at them, you better hear what I'm telling you by the Spirit right now. You better hear what I'm telling you by the Spirit. I mean this by the bottom of my heart. You listen to what I'm telling you by the Spirit. He looked at them and said, it is necessary that I go away. If I don't go away, I can't come back into you and be what I'm supposed to be in you. You're looking for me to set up something here on this earth to overthrow the Roman government, and that is not my kingdom. I need you to catch the spirit of the thing. Don't try to hold me in place. It's necessary for I to go. He gets buried in the tomb, and they scatter, thinking, oh, my God. Everything we put our hope in. We thought he was going to make Israel great again. Don't you put your faith in man. You put your faith in him. And you better get yourself on the ark. And I've never been, you know I've preached, I've been preaching for 20 years and I've never been this deliberate and direct with you. 
You know I have not. But we have no time to play. Amen. They're, 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 people are going crazy. And they're looking for direction of life. And the only thing you're going to be able to do is be like Noah. we got to prepare an ark for them. Yes. And the ark is Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Yes. And we got to get them in. Whether they come in the first, second, or third story, it don't matter. Get them in. Yeah. I don't need to tell them how bad they are. Because Jesus already said... The world is judged already. I'm here to save them from the world. Yes. In the ark. All you that are, 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 are burdened, heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you what? Rest. Rest. Do you know what the word Noah means? In Hebrew? Rest. Rest found grace in the sight of God. Rest, by the grace of God, build an ark. Rest, by the grace of God, build an ark to save his family. And they came off the ark to God said, I'll do a new thing. In the ark, God's doing a new thing. So when you step outside into your life, it'll be a brand new thing. Would you all stand with me? It's 8 o'clock. I am convinced we are in a pivotal time of history. I am convinced that God is doing something incredible across the earth. I'm convinced that the Spirit of God is moving. I'm convinced we can't sugarcoat it. I'm convinced we can't condemn people. I'm convinced that the demonstration and the power of God, the worship, the praise, every bit of it has got to go to a place that magnifies the Lord. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, God, for allowing us to be alive during this time. We didn't come here to play patty cake or romper room tonight, God. We can't be oblivious to what's happening across the country. We, 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 sometimes not, we, act, we act surprised when crazy things are found out. When sickness, disease, sin, wickedness is running rampant, why are we surprised? It does what it's supposed to do, produces wickedness. And sometimes, God, we get so focused in on that, we forget we're in the ark. So in Jesus' name tonight, Father, we say yes and we say amen. We say we have found rest in your eyes. We say by the grace of God, we'll help build this ark and strengthen your body. No time for the games. We thank you for every prophetic person that's interceding and proclaiming and standing in the gap, that's, that's leaning in to the purposes and plans of God. They're midwives, God. They're pushing, they're pushing, and they're pushing as the travail is going forward, and we thank God for them. But Lord, let us not just be so mesmerized with what they're saying, that we're watching, that we forget that we're the one giving the birth. Yeah. So Lord, we bless you tonight. And we say, let the Lord reign. Let the Lord reign. Your kingdom is ever increasing. Your government is upon our sho- your shoulders. It has no end. It's everlasting. And we say, Father, let us see it. Let us taste it. No games. Just advancement in your kingdom. And I call your people tonight blessed. In Jesus' name.
amen. God bless you all. We'll see you all Sunday morning.